right. <laughs> just uh, just so you understand, mm -hmm. um, when you when you send to the last known address and the person has no idea why they're going to court, mm -hmm. I think they use the summons with the criminal complaint so you know why you're appearing in court. Yes. Now, I know, okay, <laughs> your thought was, well, we'll just arrest him for failure to appear. But the truth of the matter is you can't use the United States Postal Service. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a false arrest. And it was a fraudulent failure to appear because you sent it to the last known address. Yeah. Instead of serving me, yes. Or serving a responsible adult where I uh, reside, yes. Or serving somebody that I had given some sort of legal um, right to receive service. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> now, um, I just wanted to know arrest or other remedies for uh, upon failure to appear. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, my wife never showed proof of service. She said that she uh, she mailed. Yes. Now, there's the certificate of compliance for indigent defendants. Yeah. Um, this has to be filed quarterly with the Snohomish County Clerk. Yes, the indigent defendant. Yeah. When you didn't give me summons, right, and the criminal complaint, of course, there's always a probability I could have contacted a pro bono attorney instead of having to be the indigent. Yes, that failed to appear where I didn't get summons or the criminal complaint. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But I noticed that it's been 14 months since I filled out this indigency uh, screening form. Yeah, yes, yes. And uh, my economic situation really hasn't improved as much as I would have liked to say that I have done a lot better for myself. <laughs> I know I've documented a lot of these lawsuits and everything, but why why do they have this quarterly filing of the indigent uh, certificates of compliance? <laughs> because Jack has never asked me to sign anything uh, except for uh, really nothing. Yes, it's as if you can say, well, you guy's crazy. We can't accept his signature for anything. <laughs> But you accepted my signature when I was arraigned, when I didn't get summons. Or <laughs> is there some reason why um, <laughs> that uh, you don't think? Ooch. Well, I was I was competent enough to fill this out. Yes, homeless, Port Angeles, Washington. Yes, and um, I I signed my signature, certified under the penalty of perjury. Yes. Do you have money available to hire a private attorney? No. Mm -mm. And um, uh, for some reason, you thought I was competent enough to tell you I was indigent. No. You would probably say that all crazy people don't have jobs and they don't have any money. But um, when you sent it to the last known address, mm -hmm. I seriously think Mike is involved in fraud. And when I was never charged with the criminal complaints, it was an accusation. Yes. I think this was a false arrest both on the uh, Clallam County Port Angeles Police Department. Apples to apples. Yes. And then uh, there was that um, the person that used to be in the Army that I tried to talk to and said, what? <laughs> Civil rights violations. You just can't go arresting people for failing to appear when you don't give them a summons and a criminal complaint. <laughs> now, when you arrest somebody, yes, and they're arraigned, <laughs> and then the notice tells them that, well, you were already arraigned because you were charged with a crime. Yep. <laughs> That's why you get those notices, and it's kind of your responsibility to make sure that you get them. Okay. <laughs> now, I'm just wanting to know the certificate of indigency after 16 months. Yes. Um, do you ever get curious that if, well, I actually don't have a residence just quite yet. I'm trying to get the deposit in the first half of month's rent, and then I'll have to go to some charities and get the other half. In fact, I don't, I think I have about 40 cents, and I'm just about out of tobacco. I'm a little concerned about my economic situation. <laughs> Now, the omnibus hearings. Yeah. 
at the time of the arraignment of the court shall set an on the omnibus hearing. Yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now there's uh, the trial at the time of arraignment. Yes. Criminal cases shall be set for trial at the time of arraignment. <laughs> Remember Judge Landis when I was video arraigned at the Jefferson County Jail? Yes. And I was like, well, where'd you send it? Because I didn't get it. <laughs> and then the prosecuting says, he said, well, he had knowledge that there was a court hearing on August 21st. And I'm like, well, when it's a criminal complaint, you actually have to serve me the summons and the criminal complaint. You can't send it to the last known address. <laughs> and then the entry of the plea. <laughs> now, I would say I'm not guilty considering the evidence that I that I emailed today. Yes. Mm -hmm. What if you're not guilty of a crime, but you don't accept the actual plea of the defendant? Yes. As in, you're going to require me to go to a cell hearing where I have the actual evidence I was in Port Angeles, Washington on June 16th. Yes. Without the entry of the plea of not guilty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I would think that there'd have to be some sort of plea entry. Yes. Did Jack enter a plea of not guilty in the court before you obligated me to a 1077? <laughs> now, somebody's saying you already mentioned that, but <laughs> when you think it's the arraignment where you sent it to the last known address? Yes. Judge Landis, did you think I was guilty when I talked to you? See, there's a big problem with not reading the protection order. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that the defendant may move for devolve review before the judge designation. Yeah. Um, there should have been a plea of not guilty entered. Now, what happens when I go to a cell hearing and you say that I need to be restored? Mm -hmm. After all that evidence, yes. After not serving me summons and criminal complaint, yes. After the false arrest and the false imprisonment, which... <laughs> And then there's this competency assessment screening that goes on in Snohomish County. Yes. Now, I would say I'm competent to stand trial, just so you know. Okay. And uh, after 20,000 videos, you could have watched some of them for yourself. In fact, you could have watched the video that I put on. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, you as a court have made yourself dependent upon mental health evaluators that say you're delusional. Yes. For really thinking that um, you could be arrested, arraigned, and get notice of court hearings. Yes. Or you could get summons and criminal complaints, and then you would know that there's a court hearing scheduled where you're going to answer the accusation of the deputy prosecuting attorney. Yeah. Seems like um, I should have just had some sort of competency. Uh, now, uh, at the hearing following receipt of the initial assessment screening report, court shall, along with the report, consider arguments uh -huh. uh, and any factual information from prosecuting attorney defendants counsel may either find that there is not a reason to doubt the competency. Mm. Now, this is for those that are in custody defendants. How many individuals that get criminal complaints and summonses that would appear in court if you had given them um, the actual summons to appear? Yes. Actually have to do competency. Just being able to appear on your own behalf because of getting summons. Yes. It really speaks to the competency of the accused. Yes. The defendant. Yes. yes. Now, for some reason. Okay. You decided to send to the last known address. <clears throat> you know, I think I'm competent to stand trial and that we really don't need a cell hearing. Mm -hmm. Now, did Judge Landis uh, find that there is reason to doubt my competency? Uh huh. And now I was never um, the in custody defendant, yes, is different than the mm -hmm. in custody. Failure to appear for sending notice or summons of sign right here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, this stay further criminal proceedings. Uh huh. Now, after you entered the plea of not guilty, pooch, pooch, and you would have given me personal service of the summons and the criminal complaint, yes. And I would have appeared in court, yes. And I would have said, I'm not guilty. I wasn't in Brennan and I wasn't cyber stalking yes. because I didn't email the Brennan or the Quilcene School Districts. Yes. 
Mm-hmm. I emailed approximately 2,000 other email addresses that day. The, the, uh, yeah, uh, now the court action is find that there is not a reason to doubt the competency of the custody of the defendant and deny the motion for further evaluation of the defendant's competency pursuant of the 1077 RCW. Yes. Um, is there some reason you doubt my competency? Because <laughs> I keep showing you what you're doing as being against the law. And you seem to think that I'm crazy for realizing that when you send notice of court hearings, right, instead of serving me personally summons and the criminal complaint, yeah, I would have to say that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. obligating me to a 1077 without entering the plea of not guilty, yes, not asking me where I was at, uh -huh, and if I have any evidence to prove exactly where I was, yes. And then, stay further criminal proceedings. Find that there is reason to doubt the competency of the in-custody defendant. Yes. It, that usually means you get charged with a crime and the police or the sheriff's put you in jail. Yes. Find there is reason to doubt the competency of the in-custody defendant. <laughs> Now, as the defendant that has appeared in court every time that you've requested my appearance in court, yes. Can you take me off the docket or is there the stay further criminal proceedings? Mm -hmm. Is there a difference between the setting aside, yes, of the criminal complaint, yes, that requires personal service mm -hmm, and summons mm -hmm, before answering the accusations of the two-count criminal complaint where I would have said I'm not guilty, I wasn't there, and I actually didn't email. 